Hello, folks. Welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, where we share the other parts of life with you in the outdoors where you never know what's coming around the bend. Yes, as always, we have joining us Jeff Tigger Earhart, and we do love hearing from all of you. Comments, stories, ideas, get a hold of us anytime. Call or text 305-900-BEND. That is 305-900-2363. Or you can always drop us an email at bendradioshow at gmail.com. Now, yes, looking at the calendar, we are well into what is referred to as... The dog days of summer. Only fitting that this new study crossed my wires the other day. And it comes from Harvard University, by the way. And Tigger, you being the dog trainer yourself, you're one of those that is very in tune with border collies. For those of you that are just joining our show. And a chihuahua. And a chihuahua, yes. I mean, border collies (laughs) is my thing. I like the border collies. I like the kelpies. I like the herding dogs. But don't forget, we've got a little chihuahua. Yes, we do. We do. All right. Well, Harvard University is saying that it is true. Dogs bite more when it's hot out. True. Research has determined that dogs are over 11% more likely to bite on a sunny day or hot day than they are on, say, a rainy day. Rainy days in general cause dogs to be a little more relaxed, lazy, kind of like we are when we all like to veg on the couch and watch a good old movie. True. I agree with that 100%. I mean, if if we're a little agitated and annoyed, it's going to be the same thing with dogs, right? Yes. Because a lot of times the flies might be bothering them and they're a little, they're irritated just like everybody else is. So they tend to be a little bit more nippy. There you have it. A little more irritable, maybe, is the way I should say. And I'm bringing this all about as many of us love taking our best friends, the four-legged kinds, on our hikes, adventures with us, as well as you may be already starting to get them conditioned, ready for this upcoming hunting season, game birds, waterfowl. It's all right around the corner, we know. But heat exhaustion, heat stress, it does affect them just as much as it affects you and I. Yes, So please, please make sure as you are keeping yourself cool and hydrated, you're also checking in on your favorite best friends, your little pets, and make sure they always have a cool place to stay, some shade throughout the day, and of course, cool, fresh water. Our spotlight shines this week on the National High School Finals Rodeo taking place as we speak in Gillette, Wyoming. 75 years of roping, riding, and mentorship is the theme as top cowboys and cowgirls compete in the 75th anniversary of this epic event, the National High School Finals Rodeo. Deemed the world's largest rodeo, the NHSRA Finals features more than 1,700 contestants representing 44 states, five Canadian provinces, as well as coming from as far as Australia, New Zealand, and Mexico. These top-notch cowboys and cowgirls are competing for more than just huge cash and prizes, but also there is more than $375,000 in college scholarships and hopes to be named the National High School Finals Rodeo World Champion. Events include bareback riding, saddle bronc, and bull riding in the rough stock events where eight seconds never took so long. Barrel racing, breakaway roping, tie-down roping, team roping, steer wrestling, goat tying, and pole bending in the timed events where seconds, hundredths of a second can make or break the win. Cutting and reining cow horse top the judged events, plus the annual queen competition. And lastly, an added competition over recent years that has us here at the Bend Show extremely excited is the shooting sports. Included are competitions in the rifle 22 caliber and shotgun trap shooting. Lifelong sports being recognized on a national level for our youth always is a thumbs up on this outfit. We wish all contestants competing as we speak having traveled near or far to make the most memorable time while in Gillette, Wyoming. We first head to Taiwan. There's a new dish that everyone's excited about. And honestly, I could see a lot of our Southeastern fans already ahead of the game on this trending food dish. The dish is frog ramen. It'll cost you about $8 American. And yep, you heard me right when I said frog ramen. It is ramen noodles served with a whole frog on the top. The broth liquid contains scallion onions and clams. Now, I got to say, I do enjoy frog legs and love ramen. 
However, at this point, sorry, folks, I'll be passing on this delicacy of a dish for now. iPhone users. The Apple iPhone has gained a new feature called the screen distance alert. This alert will sound if the iPhone is held too close to your face. Apple says increasing the distance the device is viewed from can help children lower their risk of myopia and gives adult users the opportunity to reduce digital eye strain. Think about it. Have you been dealing with symptoms that could be from using maybe your smartphone too close? Well, Apple also stated this. Screen distance and screen time uses the true depth camera to encourage users to move their device further away after holding it closer than 12 inches from their face for an extended period of time. Just wanted to give you all a heads up on that just in case you're an iPhone user and you've been hearing a little beep beep or an alert going off and just weren't sure why. Regardless, you know what? It's summer. It's warm out. Put the phone down and enjoy the moment. Next, deodorant. Yay or nay when spending time outdoors? Current Biology Journal has published a new study revealing that wearing deodorant reduces the risk of mosquito bites by, get this, 56%. Mosquitoes can pick up body odor 300 feet away. Wearing deodorant makes a person less attractive to mosquitoes because they do not like the fragrant smell or a compound found in deodorant. Now, this next bit of news had me doing a little bit of, hmm, as sometimes we all have known that marketing at times can be a little bit misleading. And when the experts weigh in, we can't help but perk up our ears and take a listen. Beach umbrellas and SPF makeup deemed useless. Hear me out on this one. Cleveland Clinic released a new study revealing that SPF makeup and umbrellas to shield yourself from the sun is ineffective. Researchers studied scores of people. What was discovered was that 78% of users of a beach umbrella still ended up with a sunburn and that 25% of the study participants whom used an SPF makeup were sunburned. Experts state prior to using SPF makeups, first apply a good broad spectrum sunscreen to your face then allow time for it to dry before applying the makeup and going about your normal makeup routines. Best be safe and beat not just the aging process, but the skin cancer risk especially. If you want more information, head to our website, thebenshow.com, and we have links directing you right to Cleveland Clinic and what the experts have to say on this discovery. When we come back, we're going to sit down and hear some more tips from pro angler Johnny Candle, as well as always, you know, Tigger and I are going to dig right into the fun stuff that you don't hear anywhere else, but the Ben show. We'll be right back. Pro rodeo fans watch the Cowboy Channel anytime, anywhere with PRCA on the Cowboy Channel Plus. Live stream the Cowboy Channel or watch your favorite PRCA rodeos on demand. Classic PRCA rodeos added weekly. Get the PRCA on the Cowboy Channel Plus for only $9.99 a month or save 25% by signing up for a full year. Visit CowboyChannelPlus.com to sign up and start streaming today. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Hey guys and gals, this is John Arman with Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV travels the back roads to the backwaters in pursuit of the ultimate adventure in hunting and fishing. Join Team UOA every week for exciting action in the crosshairs of the outdoors. Catch Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV on YouTube, Amazon Prime, and make sure to follow Team UOA on Facebook and Instagram to share in the ultimate outdoor adventure.
Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Back, and joining me as always, riding shotgun is Jeff Tigger Earhart. Well, fishing is on all of our minds, and we are always looking for the tips on how to beat the different odds and put it all in our, well, how do we say it? Put the fish in the boat. There we go. Well, here is Johnny Candle, our very own pro angler fishing guide. He's got some tips for you. Well, folks, here we go. What's working for walleyes right now across the walleye belt? It's bottom bouncer and spinner time, folks. Uh, we've got weed heads established. Some of you folks may be out in the 15, 16, 18 feet of water, depending where you live. On the Great Lakes, they're trolling spinners all over the place. On the Missouri River Reservoirs, bottom bouncers and spinners are killing it everywhere. It's just that time of the year. The fish have started to move away from the shallows. Granted, when the conditions are right, we can still get up there, cast to them, pitch to them, all that good stuff. But they're moving deeper, and that means bottom bouncer and spinner time. Uh, if I had to pick one spinner, color, hammer gold, hands down, nothing to it. There's no doubt about it. The good old hammered gold spinner is going to kill it day in and day out. Now, lots of things to think about with spinners. Uh, size and shape. Well, for shape, uh, two main ones that enter in my mind. You've got the Colorado Spinner, which is probably what most people reach for first. Very, very versatile. Good at slower speeds, 0.8 to 1 miles an hour. Let's you cover water, but not going too fast. And then the Indiana Spinner, which is what I just showed you there. Uh, that Indiana Spinner blade, you can go a little bit faster. Imitates a little different uh, size and shape of bait fish. Size, if I had to pick one, either blade, size three. Pretty versatile, covers big fish, small fish, big bait, small bait. It's right in the middle. But if you're on the Great Lakes, maybe go with a four or five. If you're fishing somewhere uh, and the fish aren't really aggressive, maybe drop down to a two or a one, something smaller. Give them just enough to get their attention, but not too much to overpower it. When it comes to bottom bouncers, Right there, we've got the bottom bouncer, that world-famous Dakota tradition bottom bouncer. A L-shaped piece of wire with a chunk of lead on it. Virtual, virtually snag-free when they're fished properly. When I say properly, that means they're bottom ticklers, not bottom draggers. You want the bottom bouncer in contact with the bottom with the least amount of line possible to get it there. That's what it's all about. If you let too much line out, they drag on the bottom. They're not very effective. Good rule of thumb, one ounce of weight for every 10 feet of water. Okay, so zero to 10, one ounce, 10 to 20, two ounce, 20 to 30, three ounce, over 30, good luck. Uh, put a lot of weight on to get down to the bottom. It's going to take a lot of weight. So what's working for walleye this week? Bottom bouncers, spinners. Hammered gold, if you only have to pick one, get out there, catch some. Pros pointers coming at you right there from our very own professional angler, Johnny Candle himself. And let's be honest, folks, he has fished all over the United States. He's extremely knowledgeable. He's so, forgotten more about fishing than you and I will ever know. Uh, exactly, exactly. Well, while we're still on the topic of fishing, as we know, it is warming up. So a lot of our fishing is going deeper in depths, right? Especially when we're talking about walleyes, those kinds of species, they're diving down deep and they could be at depths of 25 feet plus. Well, recently the North Dakota Game and Fish Department came out with their own statement encouraging anglers that if you are fishing indeed in depths of over 25 feet to please consider keeping those walleye or other species as bringing them up to the surface and up to those warmer temperatures can be very detrimental to their systems and they most likely will not survive if thrown back in. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't know that. I I, didn't, even if you bring them in slowly, they say? Correct. Okay. Correct. And they want Point everyone taken. to know as summer continues to heat up, the water's only going to get hotter, to be really careful when you are reeling in these biggins because- You don't have to worry about that, dear. <laughs> Just saying. This oh, is for me. Oh, come on. Uh, why do you got to bring in? Why do you got to be that you, guy to you remind got, you gotta me? You got to worry about that. Well, regardless, we hope that you are out and about and tossing a line. Tigger and I continue to hit the water ourselves. Yes, he is out fishing me still to this day with the fly rod. Yes, you've been still. But I haven't 
nailed a walleye for a while. No, I've that's been, trying. been a little bit hard. That's been one that I've been trying to get on my fly rod has been a walleye, but I have thus far been unsuccessful. Well, if you have a fishing report for us, be sure to send it our way here at The Ben Show. When we come back, we've got more news you've just not heard anywhere else. Stay where you are. Row Rodeo's top saddle bronc riders all in one location. It's rodeo time. The best of the best battle it out at the annual Home on the Range Champions Ride Saddle Bronc Match August 5th at the Home on the Range in Sentinel Butte, North Dakota. Get your chance at some of the cash with the live Calcutta Friday, August 4th at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame in Medora, North Dakota. Road trip. For more information and tickets, head to hotrnd.com. The Home on the Range Champions Ride Saddle Bronc Match. In the field, on the farm, or in the saddle, we're right there with you in your pocket, on your phone, and everywhere you go. RFD TV Now. Current ag reports, geo targeted weather, live streaming 24 7, and our full collection of shows you love at the tip of your finger. At less than $10 a month, it's the cheapest tool on the farm. Download the app today and start watching RFD TV Now. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, and joining me as always is Jeff Tigger Earhart. Well, last week, Tigger had a great interview with Amber Haugland of Haugland Action Auction. Amber is a female auctioneer, something not seen or heard of every day. We received an email inquiring what is one of the oddest things that's happened to her thus far that she's had to be a part of. Of selling. Well, Tigger here, he's reached out to Amber. Thanks, by the way, for being back with us again, Amber. What is something that's been a bit out of the ordinary that you've had your hand in selling? Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, there are so many. There, you know, how do you narrow it down? One thing that I didn't know that we sold was there was an impound sale and all of the vehicles had, you know, been impounded over the year or whatever during the oil boom. And uh, there was a CD system. So like a big stereo system. And the sheriff's department said, Hey, you're buying this at your own risk. You need to check to make sure there's no paraphernalia, whatever on all these items. Well, here in the CD system, there was uh, pornography. Oh, was like, oh, wow. Yeah, no, no things that you should never sell right, right? there, right then and there. <laughs> but um, as far as and then nobody wanted to buy it because they were going to be embarrassed. <laughs> well, no, the funny thing is we didn't know until later when that, I mean, we would oh. never have sold that, but the person called us when they got home and they said, oh my gosh, I just wanted you guys to know. And of course we were mortified. Well, sure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what I would say is um, as far as unique, one of a kind things, we did a uh, steam tractor uh, threshing machine sale in Rolog, Minnesota. And that had tractors that were like one of 10, one of, and I mean, these are hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in tractors. I mean, it's just unbelievable in, in steam engines that, you know, for most people walking by, they would be like, oh, it's, that's junk. That's worth a couple hundred bucks at the most. And it's worth tens of thousands of dollars. And so just realizing, hey, this item that doesn't appear to have much value or just looks like junk out in a field. I mean, that's a $250,000 tractor right there. And so I, that was probably the one of the most fun sales just because when you looked at that for most common people it didn't look like much but to the person who knew exactly what it was it was a treasure and so that's that's kind of the fun of an auction right because it's it's all in the in the eye of the beholder as far as like hey that might be a treasure it might be a gem um, but somebody else thinks it's junk. Thank you, Amber, for sharing that. That is quite the story. And I agree. The eye of the beholder on what you are selling. 
Tigger, you're you... You're talking about the tractor and not the, <laughs> the adult exactly. films. <laughs> Tigger, you are an auctioneer yourself. You've been one for a couple of decades already. What is something that's on your list as crazy out there that you've had your hand in selling? I told you this story. The wildest one that I had was we were digging through a Quonset to get everything out, and we were digging in the grain because there was rumored that there was a Model T that was actually buried in the grain, which there was that we oh, had in the sale. We it. did find the Model T, but even crazier than that was an old, those uh, tin lunch boxes. This was a Roy Rogers lunchbox. <gasps> it was in perfect condition, and we opened it up, and there was a preserved peanut butter and jelly <laughs> sandwich in there. I am I can't even make this up. This was unbelievable because it was these Bachelor Brothers that hoarded so much stuff. So, I mean, that was a great story. I mean, we we told that one a lot. Yeah, the perfect preserved peanut butter jelly sandwich. I love it. I love it. For those of you that missed last week's show, which was a great one with Tigger visiting with Amber Haugland, be sure to check out their webpage. It's hauglandsactionauction.com. Have a health watch for you all. Night owls die younger. That's not a headline anybody wants to hear. Well, get this. The Chronobiology International Journal has published a new study revealing that night owls are more likely to die younger than non-night owls. I know every one of you, your ears just perked up at this. 20,000 people were studied and it was discovered that night owls make poor life choices. The activities available late at night tend to not be the healthiest choices. Examples include it's more tempting for drinking, smoking, and eating poorly. I know I'm very guilty about the eating poorly late at night myself. After dark, people are less likely to be eating salads and exercising. Again, I'm going to be honest, I am guilty of this. The study revealed that night owls have a 20 20- one percent greater chance of dying younger than people who call themselves a morning person. If you're like myself, hearing that number right there, 21 percent greater chance of dying younger than those who call themselves a morning person. I think we're all looking at our alarm clocks right now and we're looking at when the sun goes down. Come and get it. Now for a little bit of what's cooking or not. Mustard diet is trending. A social media influencer is claiming to have lost 80 pounds on what she's calling the mustard diet. Using zero calorie mustard, the influencer is dunking vegetables and fruit into it and the protein source is from cottage cheese and chicken sausage. Now, Beck's got an issue with this. How sustainable is it to live off of just cottage cheese forever? Yeah, you're all with me on that one, right? This is definitely a trend or fad. As for mustard itself, we are 100% about keeping this natural and low-carb, low-calorie condiment on hand for all our meals. You'll find multiple different kinds of mustard in our refrigerator. Our favorite by far is Mickey's Mustard. Yes, are they a sponsor of the show? You bet. But that is because we are selective, picky, and only direct you to where we feel your money is well spent. We love using Mickey's mustard on everything from Eggs Benedict to smothering it on pork loins to even turning it into a vinaigrette on our salads. 101 uses for the stuff, and it's not going to hurt the waistline either. And that is all, folks. Thank you to my producer, sound engineer, co-host Jeff Tigger Earhart. Thank you to our Bend Field staffer and pro angler Johnny Candle for the tips this week. Be sure to check out or to book with this pro and fishing guide at Johnny, spelled J O H N N I E, candle.com. And again, thank you, Amber Hogland, auctioneer at Hogland Action Auction, for sharing that funny find. Check out this family owned business, Hogland, spelled H A U G L A N D, hoglandactionauction.com. And give them a follow on Facebook too. Remember, folks, to keep sending in those questions as well as your area's field reports. The number again is 305-900-2363. Again, 305-900-2363. Or you can always email bendradioshow at gmail.com. 
as well as be sure to be taking us on Facebook or Instagram at The Bend Show. We love hearing and seeing your life on or off the trail. If you missed part of this episode or you want to hear past shows, you can find them all on the website, thebendshow.com. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app and to The Bend Show YouTube channel. Looking to change things up for your next event, conference, or awards banquet this coming fall? Have us, Tigger and Beck, entertain your crowd. We are PRCA Pro Rodeo card holders, where Tigger is a pro rodeo announcer, and we are PRCA music directors. From MCs to event headliners, public speakers, to even acting as a host couple, let us make your gathering extra special. Ranching, cattle, hunting, fishing, camping, and rodeo, plus so much more, including... Did you know that Tigger is also an auctioneer? Try spicing up your next rodeo or fishing tournament by having us, Tigger and Beck, auction off a team or contest Calcutta to add to the excitement. Regardless, the crowd will have the stories to share with the laughs to be had. Thank you to our partners, Ditelli Outdoors, About You Photography, Home on the Range, Champions Ride, PRCA Rodeo, Buckstorm, Little Rack, Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, Wablo Creek Outfitters, Atlas Tracks, RFD TV, The Cowboy Channel, and Wrangler. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners out there that came along. And whether you're coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. And remember to keep up with me back all week long by following The Bend Show on Facebook and on Instagram. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch back if you can next week on The Bend. <laughs>